In this video I'm going to be making some cardboard dungeon tiles. Now I will be following a very similar method to what Bardscraft did, but there's one little thing that I'm going to do differently that I'm hoping will take them to the next level. So let's do it. I'm going to be doing mine with a double layering of cardboard and what I want is I want the corrugations to be opposite each other. Now that's going to help with warping and make the whole thing a little bit stiffer. For squares that's relatively easy, you can just cut out two sets of squares and then rotate the cardboard. But if you're doing anything that's not a square like a rectangle, then you need to make sure that you cut that on your cardboard at different corrugations, if that makes sense. So you want one corrugation to be going one way and then the other set to be going the other. So in inches, I'm going to do six by six, four by four, six by two. And then I think maybe like a three by one or a two by one and maybe even a two by two. So I just draw that onto the card, cut that out of the card, glue it together with hot glue. Now hot glue is better here because I really don't want it to warp. You can use PVA. The next thing I'm going to do is take some cereal box card and we're going to cut squares out of it that are just under one inch by one inch. Now the actual measurement I use here is about 24 millimeters by 24 millimeters, but you can use whatever you want. So I just draw that onto my cardstock and then cut that out with a knife. Cutting all of the little squares can take a little while, but it's worth it, I think, in the end. On your dungeon tiles, you want to draw out your grid if you're going to be using a grid like I am. And then I'm going to glue the cereal box squares shiny side down. And now that's important for painting. It's just easier to paint the non-shiny side. I'm using PVA here, but not using like loads of it. And I'm just going to try and make it so that my squares are in the middle of the one inch by one inch dimension, leaving a little bit on either side. Now for the edges, it doesn't really matter so much, but you generally you want your squares to be forming that pattern of that one inch by one inch, but obviously with just a little bit of a grid. Whilst you're gluing your squares to your tiles, you can do little bits like maybe you could cut off a corner and make it so that the corner is like slightly separated to make it look like it's cracked. You can do little chips in your cardboard. Whatever you want to add a little bit of detail is all good. A completely optional thing here is to clad the side. I'm actually just going to be using this cheap cardstock that I bought. All I do is I put my dungeon tiles on the card and just mark out how thick it is and then just cut out strips of that. I can then cover the edges in PVA and I do use a little bit of hot glue so that I don't have to wait while the card is sticking to the sides, but you're pretty much done there. And then it's time for the little twist that we're going to do. So I'm going to take some filler, also known as backling joint compound. People always disagree what it is. As long as you know what I'm talking about, it's all okay. And uh, ideally you want to mix in some paint with that. Now, preferably you want to make your filler grey because these dungeon tiles are going to go grey. However, I'd already mixed some brown in it. I did a bit of grey and I ended up with just a light brown. And then all we're going to do is take some of that filler and I'm just going to lightly put it in some places on the dungeon tile just so that it's there and then I'm going to get some water and water is your best friend here dip my fingers in it and then I'm literally just going to smear all of that filler all over the tile and it's fine I'm not worried about brush marks or anything like that at the minute I just want to get a nice thin layer all over the tile and then I'm going to come in with a paper towel and I'm just going to actually like wipe away a lot of the filler you really want just a very very subtle smooth texture here and then I'm going to take either an end of a brush or a cocktail stick and I'm just going to scrape out the filler from the lines that are between the pavement slabs basically because they are supposed to be gaps you don't want them to be filled in that will look a little bit weird and then I'm going to take the kitchen towel again and I'm going to sort of stipple away at the filler so that I am getting a very slight texture it's very subtle and you don't want it to be like too pointy because that will not really look like stone you basically just want to press on it a little bit and make it so that there's no wipes from like brushes or your finger and you just want a nice little stippling texture. Then you let that dry and then I sprayed it black but you could just paint it black and then I painted it a dark grey. Now when you are painting this the filler can reactivate with the moisture and then obviously you run the risk of getting brush strokes again. So what I would recommend is if that does happen just stipple it with your brush you'll end up with a very similar texture anyway. Then I dry brushed that up with the increasing shades of grey then I gave it a black wash and then I dry brushed it back up all the way to a white but only with a very small amount of white. And I have to say I am actually very happy with the result of this. When I look at it the biggest compliment I can give it is that it doesn't really look like cardboard to me. Yes the texture on the stones isn't quite a stony texture but I have to say it's close enough that on the table I don't think I would give this a second thought. So I'm pretty happy with the results. Thank you to my patrons. I do really appreciate you guys. And if you want to support me, then Patreon is obviously the best way to do so. But you can also just like this video and subscribe to the channel. Have a most beautiful day. Goodbye.